Lira. Although it's my first time to be when it is a city. Mm. I've been here during the good times. I've been here during the bad times. I've been here during the better times. So, coming to Lira, I'm coming home. And I want to thank you, I want to tell you from the bottom of my heart that I feel at home. Thank you so much. I want to congratulate you for attaining this status of a city. There are many areas in Uganda that would have loved to be called a city. Many of them have not. They failed because the characteristics which are required of a city, they didn't fulfill them. And they still have to fulfill them. But you fulfilled yours. So you are the chosen few. You are the chosen few. And you deserve a big congratulation. You know, now everybody, we have now about 14 cities. And others are going to come on next year. Up to 2026, many other areas, urban areas are going to come to be called cities. But you're already on the move. And you deserved it. So I want to congratulate you. And in therefore, in that respect, I would like to congratulate the elected leaders upon whom the responsibility has been placed to steer this new baby to success. I want to call it a responsibility. And as leaders, I want us to take it that way. A responsibility to lead our people, to show the way. Your gain will be the thank you that the people will make for you. Just to be thank you if you do it very well. There are also those leaders who have been appointed by various appointing authorities. You have the RCCs. You have the security leaders who have been sent here, and many others. I also want to thank you, because you are all part and parcel of the development of this place. You're part of the leaders who must steer this, camp, this uh, city to success. So I want to thank all of you, and plus all those leaders whom I've not mentioned. I've not mentioned you, not because you're small. Everybody in Lira City is important, beginning with that LC1 chairperson, beginning with that family leader who must provide guidance to the children. We are all very important. And the success of Lira City to develop to where it wanted to be will depend on all of us working as a team. Working as a team. And I was happy to hear from the town council clerk, I mean the, the town clerk, and the other leaders who spoke before me about unity in Lira about your ways of resolving your issues. It is there in, in writing. The town clerk said, I mean, said so. Let it not remain on the paper. Let's practice it. Let's practice it. 
And if you work as a team, there's no way Lira City cannot grow. I was telling the mayor, considering the geographical area of Uganda, you're almost near there, at the center of Uganda, as far as the city status are concerned. All the roads to other parts of Uganda radiate through Lira. You want, you want to go to the east, go through Lira. You want to go through the west, you go through Lira. You want to go through south, you have to go through Lira. And north, through Lira. With this kind of setup and radiation of roads and services, how can we fail? How can Lira City fail to develop? How? That's why your population is so big. I come to that issue of population later, but that's why your population is so big. <coughs> so I congratulate you and the elected leaders, the appointed leaders. And I congratulate you for having graduated to be candidates for what we call in the USMID project. Again, you needed to do an exam to graduate. Not every municipality is a candidate. You had to have certain features to qualify. You have qualified for the first, you have qualified for the second. So you are really senior candidates of the USMID project. It means you implemented the first one very well. I do not want you to start praising yourselves that you have done so well. You relax. In the next phase, which we are coming to launch today, I want you to do much better. You are Lordship, the mayor, the town clerk, your deputies, everybody, the councillors. Let us all do much better. There is a room for, for, for improvement. There is a room. And you have chosen very strategic proje uh, projects, very strategic. That road which we toured, which you have selected, is a big commercial hub. It's a big commercial hub. And you should be able to succeed. For us at government level, our biggest support, our biggest support is in physical planning, to support, to help you to do physical planning. Many people think that our biggest portfolio is that of Usmid. No. Usmid is just a very tiny, small part. We set the policy, we plan, and once we've done the plan very well, we send it to you and all the other agencies to make sure that we, as a team in Uganda, in the Uganda government, we implement it. That's what we do. So implementation requires all of us, all the agencies, physical planning. If you plan for your roads now, if you plan where your other services will be now, it will be less costly when you come to implement them. Planning does not mean you are going to build it today. It just means you are putting a direction where your roads will pass. So that when you come, you don't have to break the roads, which I mean the buildings which are already there. You, the municipal authorities, will be able to advise people and say, do not pass here. Don't build here. Don't grow crops here. This is a path for roads. This is going to be a path for the water, for electricity, and for housing, for public, for the public. So, it's absolutely important that as we do these other things, 
you revive your plan and start implementing it. So that next time we'll do things according to the plan. I'd like to call upon the role of the community, the role of the city development forum, the role of the consultants, and the role of the contractors, and the role of the media in implementing these programs. All those of you who I've mentioned here, plus others who I've not mentioned, who have a significant role. Today, the minister is here. He's not going to be here tomorrow. This team from, from the Ministry of Lands are not going to be here tomorrow. Some of you are more on the ground. So we need you to get involved in implementing this project. So, in that respect, I'm also happy. When we were touring, I heard that the project affected persons, especially in the lower sector of the boundary road, who were affected. But nevertheless, they allowed that road to go. I want to thank you. Without conversation, I want to thank you. I want to thank you. If you go to our areas, in the rural areas, you'll find where the churches, where the mosques, the places of worship are standing. They were offered by our, our forefathers. There was that grandfather of yours who said, I have this so much chunk of land, you can put a church here, you can put a mosque here. Free of charge. They never asked for a compensation. Right? That's why you have that place of worship there now. Others offer for a school. Those school areas, the lands now called for the school, they belonged to somebody once upon a time. Those people offered. So the spirit of offering should continue, including that one in the city. That's why I'm very happy with those people who offered. And this time the offering for the benefit of the city, where all of us will benefit. All of us will benefit. Those have made a very big contribution, very big. And we must continue. So that we minimize the cost. Because if you have to take some of the money which is sent here to compensate people, then you not have enough to dig the roads to finish the, the children's park. And yet, these are all projects that benefit all of us. So I want to thank them. And I want us to follow their example. Like somebody said here, these are not government roads.